My name is Dr. Jane Kazmarek. I'm an astrophysicist here at The Dish. And we are actually standing in front of the 64 meter behemoth behind me. And today we're gonna to take you on a little bit of a tour to show you what goes on inside of the dish, break it down layer by layer, and actually talk about what happens at every single step along the process of data coming from space through my telescope, and then finally to me. This is the observer's room. So if we ever have a local observer here at Parks and they want to control the dish above them, they'll come to this room and they'll be able to control the telescope through these three screens. It's also really useful because we have this massive screen that tells me where the telescope is pointing. It's hard sometimes to figure out where you are looking on the sky if you are inside of this huge structure. So we also have different monitors that allow us to figure out where exactly on the sky we're pointing, or if, for example, we're pointing at the sun, that would be terrible, and this will let me know. So we're now in the second floor control room here inside Parks. And you can see around me, there's a bunch of cables, there's a bunch of machines. This room here is actually where Parks really made its scientific mark in astronomy. Because of this interface between the astronomer and the data processing, astronomers throughout the last 50 years were able to actually get their hands dirty, try new techniques, and able, were able to discover a whole new way of seeing the universe. So we're now just going to be running some routine tests before we hand over to an astronomer. Uh, and it's about time that we start tipping the dish. There aren't many radio telescopes in the world that have a spiral staircase. So we've now ascended the spiral staircase and we're now inside of the junction room at Parks. At this point, everything around us will be moving except for this center column here. Back when the dish was being designed and built in the 50s and 60s, there was no telescope on Earth that was powerful enough to drive the dish with the precision required for astronomy research. So Barnes Wallace of World War II fame not only designed the beautiful purlons that we see on the dish surface, he also thought of the master equatorial mount that still drives parks today. And it still works and it's still precise enough for us to do the science that we do every day here at the dish. So we are now in the twister room and if you take a look behind me, you can kind of understand why we call it that. So as the dish is turning around and it's looking at different objects of the sky, you'll see the different weave of cables switch in this room. So the cables here are actually what limit how much the dish can dance. So at any given time, there are two motors that are driving the dish around and this is one of them. It looks pretty small and that's because it is pretty small. It's only 15 horsepower. And the reason that we're able to move such a large structure with such small power motors is because of the big gearboxes behind me. They actually are able to take that little bit of power and move the very finely balanced instrument. So what really makes the telescope work is a small team of dedicated staff engineers, technicians, and astronomers alike, working 24-7 to keep the telescope as relevant as ever. As the dish approaches its 60th anniversary in 2021, the science that's coming from the dish is as important as it's ever been.